Welcome. This lesson is about how to learn and practice the major blues scale guitar positions. There's a specific way to work on them to really get them down, and that's what we're going to cover. This lesson will show you the five major blues scale guitar positions so you can play the major blues scale all over the fretboard in any key. If you work on it in this way, if you work on these scale forms and get them down in the way that I'm going to show you, you will have a much easier time applying the scale forms to real music, to seeing where you are on the fretboard, and to knowing where you are in a key. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com, and I teach a lot about music theory, mapping out the fretboard, and practice strategies. Right now I'm doing a series of lessons on how to practice different types of scales, different scale types, in a very specific way that I think is just the magic bullet for really internalizing and hearing, understanding, and mapping out scales on the fretboard. And this lesson is about the major blues scale. If you want to see the lessons I did on other scale types, there's a link in the description to a playlist that goes to all of them. So here are the five major blues scale guitar positions. These are all five of them. Sometimes those, these will be called scale forms, sometimes scale shapes, sometimes scale patterns, sometimes scale positions. There are other ways, other ways to organize and practice scales on the fretboard, but I recommend that we have these five shapes really comfortable and kind of have our default way of knowing the scales before working on other ways. All five of these scale patterns are written with the root as C. So these are all the C major blues scale, and it's the five different places that you can play that. But of course, you can move any of these around the fretboard to play them off of any other root and play them in any other key just by shifting them. If you've played with the major blues scale at all, most likely you've probably probably played the one blues scale form that is the most ubiquitous, the most common. There's a reason for that, that one of these five forms is kind of what everybody learns first and everybody uses and some people use for their whole career and that's just what they use and they sound amazing at it. But there are four others and ideally we want to see the whole fretboard with all of these. But let's look at um, what's going on with maybe why that one shape is so common and really it's just that it ergonomically fits in one's position you don't have to shift that's what's going on there with all of these other ones you have to kind of shift out of the scale position and then shift back in and it gets confusing as to you know when you're adding a blues note and the blues note is added to the pentatonic scale to make it the blues scale. When you're adding that blues note, it's like, well, where do I add it? Do I add it on this side? Do I add it on this side? It's kind of, it's uncomfortable. You have to stretch or reach or, or shift. So the way that I recommend practicing this, that makes all the difference is we just need to have a solution for that. We just need to have an organized way to approach it and then it solves the problem. And so the way to do this is to take these outside notes that go out of position that makes us shift and come back. Well, there's going to be one on each side. And the question is, well, which one do you play? Well, I say play both of them. This is really nice because then we actually get used to how that note is the same note and it's an option uh, for the blues note around the scales. If this is confusing, you'll totally see what I mean uh, when I demonstrate it as well, because I'm going to demonstrate it and show you what notes I'm playing in the diagram. But you can see the diagram there and these outside notes the way to play them that I recommend is to play the blues scale on the string of the note that you are going to. So what that means is that we're going to end up playing the blues scale on the left side of the scale form when we're ascending, and we're going to end up playing the blues scale on the right side of the scale form when we are descending. And an added bonus that I really like the sound of is to specifically slide from the blues scale note into the scale position again. This sounds just great. So I just like to always practice it this way. And that's how I want you to practice it as well. And you'll hear me demonstrate it that way in a second. So that's just some unique stuff about the blue scale that we had to address. But the approach that we want to use to, to really internalize any scale is something that I call the root to root method or the root to root exercise. This is basically just the exact same thing I've been walking through in all these different videos for different scale types, because I want kind of a resource for each scale type. And the root to root method, the point of it is that it's what it takes to actually internalize the sound of the tonality of the scale that we're trying to play. Um, we usually just, we, we have these scale positions and the root is not the lowest and highest note in any of them. So we just get this sense of kind of playing physically through a scale form and we get kind of a general sound of it. But unless we target the root in a specific way, unless we really pay extra attention to the root, we're not really getting uh, the sound very often. We, we could accidentally sometimes, but we're not intentionally grabbing that sound that we actually want. So for example, this is the major blues scale, kind of the neglected um, 
sibling of the the blues scale, the minor blues scale. Um, well, they're the exact same collection of notes, the major blues scale and the minor blues scale. When is it one and when is it the other? It's how you treat the root. And that's why this exercise is so important. It's really going to show us how to use it in different contexts. If we want it to sound major blues scale, if we want it to sound minor blues scale, we need to play it differently. Other instruments that don't have positions, that aren't playing in positions, they always practice scales from the root to the root. That's what they do. So let's borrow from that logic and, and make sense of it and practice with the root to the root. So here's how it works. So these are the rules of the root to root exercise or the root to root method for really any scale you do this on. It's just a great benefit. The major blues scale is perfect. We kind of have to, otherwise it's going to start sounding like the minor blues scale. So the rule number one is that we're going to start on the root. Easy enough. Rule number two is that we're going to play the whole scale form. Okay, we usually do that, no problem. Rule number three, this is the big one, is that every time you get to a root, you need to repeat that root. You can pause and repeat it or just repeat it and keep going, but you need to play it twice. You get to a root, you play it, you play it again and keep going the direction that you were going. Rule number four, very important, you don't repeat. You are not allowed to repeat any other notes that are not the root. So you don't want to repeat those outside notes, the lowest note and the highest note in the scale form that we sometimes have a habit of doing because it's at the edge and we pause and repeat. Uh, don't repeat those. You just bounce right off of them. You can only repeat those if they happen to be the root because we want to repeat all the roots. And then the fifth rule, the fifth guideline for the root to root method is that we want to end on the same root that we started on after playing the whole scale form. So if there are notes below that root, you got to go under, go beneath it, come back around and land on that root that you started on. So that's it. That's how you do it. Now I'm just going to straight up demonstrate that exercise through all five of these major blues scale guitar positions. And so you can hear it, so you can see it. And this is exactly the way that I want you to practice it and be able to play it as well. One thing that I'm going to reiterate here is that I'm going to slur from the blues note onto the next note everywhere I can. When it's those outside notes, it's pretty straightforward because I'm going to slide. Sometimes on the ones that are inside, I'll do it. Sometimes maybe not, um, just depending on how it feels in the moment or some of them are easier than others. But those outside ones are especially tasty. And I think they're just easy wins to do that. So I just wanted to point that out. And one other thing that to listen for while I'm doing this, if you are familiar with how these five scale forms are the same exact scale shapes as the minor blue scale, as the kind of what we think of as the normal blue scale, if you're familiar with that, just listen for how distinctly major these sound, how they do not sound like the minor blues scale. And if you want, you can go check out the lessons and hear the different demonstrations. Even better, just practice the difference on your own and, and hear how awesome it is to hear that difference. So here's the demonstration. <laughs> So that's what I want you to be able to do. Once you can do that, once you have that down, once you've worked on that, here are the next steps to take to continue to work on really getting down, solidifying, internalizing these skills so you can use them when you're expressing yourself in real music. The first thing is that you just want to be able to do just exactly that at some point through all 12 keys so off of every root, off of all 12 roots. So you got those five scale forms and then you have 12 different roots to do that off of. And it's not as heavy duty as it sounds. I mean, you could do it in one sitting if you're comfortable with that. Otherwise, I don't care if it takes you six months, create a checklist, show that you did at some point you did this key. So next time you go through it, you do it in another key. This is really beneficial to just have at some point played each of the five scale forms in every possible place that it can be played off of every possible route that it can be played on the guitar. It's a good feeling. It's a good accomplishment. And it's not that hard to do. It takes just 
basically a little bit of organization. Uh, so I highly recommend that. If you get really comfortable with the scales, you go through it all in one sitting. That's really good practice. The second thing to do to continue to work on your scales is to uh, play it with melodic patterns. Melodic patterns are just breaking up the notes. Uh, so it's not just only linear. So it's not just only uh, stepwise. Create a little uh, melodic pattern out of the scale and then do that through the scale. The first pattern that I always recommend is melodic thirds. Now that's with a diatonic scale, which is a seven note scale. So with a pentatonic scale or with a blues scale, it's not exactly melodic thirds anymore. I sometimes call it the every other note pattern, but that's also not ac totally accurate sounding. It's really you, you're skipping up a note. You're skipping a note up and then you're coming back down one and then skipping up again and then coming back down one so that's that's the first pattern i always recommend starting with we want to have a couple a few you can make your own or, or or um look some up and i have a pdf that i can give you that has some more patterns with it but if we did that um what i sometimes call the every other note pattern if we did that pattern skipping up coming down one with this blues scale and we'll use the most common shape that everyone's used to here it would sound like this <laughs> So that's a little funky with a blues scale, major blues scale or minor blues scale. When you're doing patterns, you don't have to think root to root. That's its own exercise. That's that's what we want to do to to kind of map out where all the roots are, internalize that sound. With the melodic patterns, you're just doing it with with the scale selection. Um, and so that's a little funky to do it with a blues scale, and I think it's extra cool sounding and kind of rare to use on that. But the point of it, whether you like the sound of it or not is to map out the scale so we can see it with like a bird's eye view. When we see the map of the scale, it proves to us, are we seeing notes beyond just whatever the next note is? I call that the maze view. When you only see the next note, we wanna see the map view where you actually can hop around. You see everything there and you go, oh, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. So having a pattern that forces you to skip around is part of that. So I said I have a PDF. I have a PDF of the top three, what I think are the top three pentatonic scale patterns to uh, work on to get improvisation sounding less like scales and more like melodies. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's a very simple sheet, just three simple exercises that can, that can be really helpful. Um, it just shows within a pentatonic scale, but you can apply uh, at least two of them to any type of scale. Just use the link in the description to grab that. Two other things I recommend doing as you're continuing to work on scales. One, just make sure you can do it with a metronome. I would I would, after you get it down with the root to root, check yourself that you can do the root to root exercise with a metronome. Doesn't have to be super speedy, just at a pace is what's important because that proves to us that we have it down in a relaxed way and we're not thinking in between the notes and we're not hesitating between the notes. We just want to uh, do it as the, the way music unfolds in time is pretty unforgiving. We need to have it down in that way. And the last thing to do is just make sure you improvise with each scale form. And specifically, we just mapped out all the roots with root to root. You wanna improvise and you want to really target the root in your improvisation. This is how you're improvising in major blues scale or minor blues scale because you're really targeting the root when you're, and you can kind of overemphasize it a lot in this practice just to, just to get it down in, in your kind of artful expression later on, you can be more tasteful or subtle about it, but I recommend really kind of driving that home in your practice so you have a strong sense of it. Three other quick things just to take into consideration is as much as possible, be alternate picking, down, up, down, up, alternating. Um, as much as possible, be aware of that or alternating with fingers or a finger and a thumb. So you're not just going I, 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 or down, 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 that kind of thing. So be alternate picking. Another thing to take into consideration is just every so often listen to and feel for your tone and your tension. Are you squeezing too hard? Are you playing really aggressively here? Is there rattling? Is there buzzing? Um, is, is the tone really bright? Is it, is it warm? How, how do you like it? So pay attention to all of those things. I think of that as kind of the category of tone, basically. Um, so that's something to every so often check in on and, and think about and then go back to working on whatever else you're working on. And then the third thing is to play in a legato way, work on playing legato and connect it. When we don't have our technique quite there yet, we, we, it can require that we kind of jump between the notes and have a little gap. That's totally okay, but just start listening for, is there a gap between the notes and can we shrink that gap to make it smooth and connected as we play single notes. If you map out all your major blue scale guitar positions in this way, if you practice them in this way, the rewards are just immense. It is, it is so powerful and helpful. You're gonna be able to learn lines quicker, learn things quicker, see them on the fretboard better, know where you are in the key better, um, hear 
the the root better, hear the tonality better, um, all of these things. Plus, you're just we're just going to see as we map out anything this way, as in with any scales, how much anything we play in music so often relates back to scale structures. Anything in tonality is always related back to that. So it's just the benefits are enormous. You're going to remember things longer because you have kind of a template and a structure to place it on, kind of a mental map of how music fits together. And so it's really helpful. Ideally, we want to do this approach on every scale that we want to learn. That's why I'm making all these separate videos kind of going through the same process with different scale types. So there's kind of a resource for each scale type. Again, there's a link in the description to get to a playlist of all the different scale types if you're interested in working on that same stuff with other scales. Like I mentioned, you can grab that free PDF on the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns that I recommend working on. And it's just a nice little exercise sheet. It shows tabs and notation of those three patterns. Two of those work on any scale type. One of them is just a pentatonic thing that is super cool. And it can make all the difference in making improvisations and solos sound less like scales and more like melodies. So check that out if you want to. You can use that link, like I said, or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell. Happy scale practicing. Thanks for watching. Take care.